Today is the 25th of January 2014. The situation with Fukushima and the accident which has happened in the Daiichi nuclear power plant has gone beyond the control. We have tried to negotiate with International Atomic Energy Authorities and TEPCO, the owners and the, the operators of the nuclear reactor, in trying to find a way that we can allow a new method of approach to start that it can help the Fukushima people, not only the farmers, but the environment and at the same time the contamination in the sea. The reality is there is a simpler way to extract nuclear materials from the land and from the sea and from the water contamination. This is an unknown technology which has been in the position of the Keshe Foundation for years and for the first time we have decided to release it public as we said in our mandate of 2014 roadmap. Priorities for Fukushima and through Fukushima we open new technologies. The situation which we are going to explain and the method is for the farmers themselves to be able to help themselves individually or as a collective. The cost to decontaminate does not run into less than maybe a thousand euros, less than a thousand dollars. You can help yourself and as this contamination is going to be continuous, so you can repeat the same thing every year before you cultivate. You can clean the water on a regular basis. At the same time, the technology will be explained how even TEPCO can clean up the new uh, contamination waters which are arriving in the station every day. The story of this new technology is very much the way we saw with what I call in the um, contaminations of the waters around Northern Europe too. So this technology can be used further on for land contamination and water contaminations around the world. We start to explain the fundamentals and then we go through it step by step. If we consider every element to be like a plasma, and that's how the shape of a plasma is. Earth, the sun, the moon, but different shape of it, different size of the plasma. What has happened, if we call for example this plasma, the plasma of uh, cesium or this plasma, plasma of another nuclear material or another contamination, each one has a certain dimension and certain amount of energy which we explain energy as gravity and magnetic field. So once we measure the gravitational field, magnetic field and the energy of the element, then we can easily understand how these things can be moved and extracted. One of the main points to understand about the work of the Keshe Foundation is that we are a space technology development. What this means, we have not developed this technology for Fukushima. We have not developed this technology for decontamination around the Earth. We have developed this technology to be able to capture these packages of magnetic gravitational fields in the space to be able to produce food or material in deep space. As it says, we are very much involved in development of the man in the space and not the production of material for earthly use. In the space, we can't carry all the food and all the materials with us. So we have developed a technology where we can convert the energies, which we call gravitational and magnetic field, into matter. So what has happened, now we're converting this technology into the use on Earth because of the application and the situation in Fukushima. According to the Japanese government, today there is over 145,000 dislocated people due to Fukushima. And these are going to be dislocated, they're going to be moved, they're going to, they cannot come back to their land for maybe 10, 20, 30 years, or if they come back, there will be problems as we've seen. The same problem we see in Niger, where the uranium mines are, and we see a lot of contamination, where the most of the nuclear materials of French government arrives, and the local people are getting destroyed very badly through harm, through the uranium contamination and other radioactive materials, which is airborne in the dust. 
So this is not just application for Fukushima. Let's go through this step by step. What is happening in Fukushima is that tons, we estimate about 160 tons of highly radioactive material, uranium, plutonium and others, have literally blown into the air. And what they've done, they have contaminated and mixed within the soil. It has come in in a very simple way and further on, they have mixed themselves into the water. They are part of the structure and they sit there as energy packs. They sit there as material, what we call radioactive material. What has happened now is that this water, contaminated water, has mixed itself with more radioactive material, new compositions with the water. So we have what we received is a mixture of two, more radiation, more materials. And this story will carry on for years to come. But the whole contamination, the whole process, all these materials can be extracted very easily. We do this in a space. Now we are showing it how it can be done in a very easy way by the farmers. If you're a farmer, it's very easy. I'm sure in your farms, you have plenty of rusted nails. It's very simple. You have rusted iron bars. You have wires in different shapes and forms. You have pieces of metals in any shape or form. Most probably you have a lot of copper pipes and everything else which is hanging around. There are pieces of metals which are sitting around. There are literally chicken barbed wires in your farms which you've been using. All these can be used to turn the situation in Fukushima. How is done? We explain this as a breakthrough technology and we explain in details how simply you can change the situation. Look for whatever you have in metals because the rustier the material is, the better results you're going to get in absorption. Because what this is, is oxidated, which means it's literally metals which are rusted. Copper, you cannot rust, but you can find different conditions with it. The same with the metals, with the mesh. If you find a good combination of materials, as farmers, you can use them very simply. We have to create conditions. Earth was not created because somebody took different measures and amounts of different materials to put together. The conditions were created, the certain materials came together and led to creation of this planet. The same thing is with the world of science in plasma technology. We create conditions and that conditions should give or let us reach the point where we can create or develop or be able to produce new materials. So, what we've done in a very simple way. We have looked at every opportunity what people around the world have been using and have the accessibility to, and they've been telling us for years what they've been doing. We listen, we don't use some of the processes, we use some of the processes. So, how you can change the situation? These are the rusty nails. These are the chicken mesh wires. You can get the wires. Any material which can be processed. This is a very simple material. It's called caustic. If you use caustic in a very simple way, for about a kilo of caustic, you can produce at least half a ton of a right material. All you do, you spray the caustic at the bottom and very simply, very simply, add boiling water. So you need the heat generators. If you can have a look inside, the process is literally a boiling process. What this does, this creates the right condition and environment for the nano oxides to be produced in the right way but not just with caustic. There is a process. You have to close the gap, close the container, and leave it for 24 hours minimum. The material needs time. Needs time.
time to do its work. After 24 hours, you, all you need to do is to empty the container. Then, do not touch. Make sure you do not touch the material much. You can drain it, or you can use a different composition of containers. We recommend the use of plastic, because you get certain results with plastic. Then what you do, you transfer the materials from the container where you left the material for over 24 hours into an environment which is electrically conductive. Another wire mesh on the bottom. You put all the material on a table or a mesh, as I've done here. Very simply, you have to keep the condition very moist. When you place the material on a conductive plate like this, you need one process to be added. You have literally to add a very, very small amount of voltage across the materials. So what you need, if you look at the condition, the voltage which shows you create the electrical condition. This has to be on impulses of just for randomly between 5 to 10 seconds. You withdraw the current, you withdraw the voltage, and then what you do, you leave it for approximately 5 to 7 hours. You come back again, in 5 or 7 hours, you create another small current. You do this process 3-4 times over 24 hours. So, even small battery connected to the plate creates the right condition for the electric current to flow. What does this thing do? What does this process do? This process allows nano layers to be produced from under to the top of the material. So, what you create in a very simple way is nanomaterials at zero cost. Scientifically has proven, scientists in Russia and in other parts of the world have shown how nanomaterials can be used for decontamination, but they do not know how to produce it in an easy way and cheap way. Now you have seen how it's been done. We have used this method nearly over seven years. We do it for different purposes. Now you can do it yourself in the farm. Total cost, less than $10, $15 to produce as much material. Then we show the next process what you have to do. What we're going to show is what we have produced and how you produce materials with one of the most expensive considered nanotechnologies in the world, which costs only a few cents. As we said, the Cash Foundation opens the doors of its simple technology in 2014, and we start opening it from now. And with it, we'll come to the next step. We show you the materials, how these materials are produced and kept. The production of new material is not something new to Cash Foundation. If you look at the logo of the Cash Foundation, we always spoke with and about new materials. These are the new materials, as in deep space, we cannot rely on supply from Earth. We have developed a technology where you can produce as much material as you like. These are exactly what we have produced from the same process as before. These are copper wires with the fully nanomaterials. This is the chicken mesh wire nanomaterials. This could be a saw which was rusted in the car, fully nano-coated oxide. A radiator with aluminium, nano-coated. On the other hand, this is the nails which we showed you before. Again, nano-coated. Other pieces, which you can see, all nano-coated. Anything which is with a steel or copper iron, any metal can be nanocoated, even with nanocoated gold. This is the wires which we saw we put in the system. These are literally 
every one, every single layer is nano coated. These materials, like these wires, have been tested by the universities in Europe and have been confirmed to have the characteristics of it. This is another nano layer. These are copper sheets which is used in batteries. This is copper oxide nano, in reality worth a lot of money because it can be used as a superconductor and an insulator. So, but there is one secret. You cannot expose these materials to air till the point of use. So you have to keep them away from oxidization any further once you bring them out of the major box, the main box. So let's see what happens to this. As we said before, that's a nanotechnology which we've been involved in. What is a nanotechnology? Nanomaterials are literally create holes and gaps. So what happens? If you create hole and gaps, what we call PN junctions, in these materials, this environment creates a specific gravitational magnetic field of its own. So what happens? This creates a gravitational magnetic field on the metal that attracts another material to itself because it creates its own miniature earth on the metal and that attracts near enough the materials to it. So what in happen, it actually happens is that the, let's say this is the gap on the steel which you just processed. The gap is big enough to accommodate the cesium. So the cesium gets locked into the metal. On the other hand, you have another material. Let's say there is another radioactive material which is in the water or in the land. So you lock that too. This is the process. So what you do, you can do two different processes. As we said before, you can put the material in land, but the best solution for it is to mix, to water the land in a very simple way allow the radioactive material to become some sort of moist and mixed in the solution. So what happens, this solution now, this technology of putting water with soil has been tested by scientists from universities in Japan. We have seen their process, we have seen, they have shown us the technology. So what they are doing, they are literally uh, mixing the soil, topsoil, with water and extracting the water and they measure the radiation level reduces by washing. But then they have the water in another tank, they have to dissolve it or collect it and find a solution for that. But with this method, all you do, you literally mix your materials in the sand, in the soil, in the water. You have two options. Then because you have metals, you can run a magnet, you can create a magnet and all you do, the magnet with a cesium or radioactive material attached to it is extracted. These magnets can be temporary magnets induced by current or magnets which you can use as solid magnets. Then you have decontamination and how to remove them. The best we suggest is magnetic plates as you see, you can run over the land and when you collected all the materials which you de deposit in like the nails you extract it and you literally give it back to TEPCO TEPCO can do a lot with this so in fact all you do you really collect all the contaminated materials back in what does your copper wire do? attracts a different type in turn you collect these materials the wire the same process. So all you do, you extract, clean up the land and you allow the material to be collected in different form. You can see what, there is another nail connected with some more material. You All you do, you deposit it back and when you demagnetize, it drops in. So now we haven't solved the problem but at least we have managed to decontaminate the land. 
the process in there when it's collected is for TEPCO and the Japanese nuclear industry to sort out. Then you go back into the water contamination. The water contamination is very much the same. You add what has happened in this process, the materials which we have, uranium, plutonium, whatever, has been mixed in the water. By allowing, by putting these materials in the water, all you do, you capture them. Again, attached. Now we can physically remove them. You have different shape and form because you can do the same thing. You can do the same back in. Again, the same with the nails. The nails, you attract different radioactive materials. There is a process what is known as dragging. You can use a wire mesh in the farmland and just literally drag across the water. You absorb more material this way. We've tested this and it works and it's correct. In a way, with two, three times the same process, you can decontaminate. But at the same time, in a very simple way, if you have what has happened now with TEPCO, collecting all these soils in these blue bags and black bags in tons and tons, what they can do, they can mix like the uh, metals like iron and coppers into the sacks or empty the sacks in the environment and then all they need to do is literally to hold on to the material they have in the sacks and empty the, the product out. What you're left with is residual which is metallic and is magnetized. So you have again different propositions and compositions back together. So in a very simple way, we used to use coal as the contaminating material or filtering. Now we use nanomaterials. Nanomaterials are literally full of holes that are the best filters, not only for materials, but for magnetically, gravitationally induced materials like nuclear materials, like cesium. Why cesium is so radioactive? Because it has a higher number of neutrons. And these neutrons are trying to decay to a slow, uh, lower level, which is the electron and the proton. So they release more of their energies. So you have a large number of neutrons in the, in the center of the radioactive material. And these rapid energies for decay dictates how much magnetic gravitational fields are released from this material. These magnetic fields can link up with another composition which is on the metal and get attracted to. This is a change of the use and production of new materials. It's unknown, now we are breaking more and more into it. Now we go to the next step for TEPCO. TEPCO cannot literally use these kind of things so freely but they have to do different composition and proposition. So we show you the next step, how it can be done. This process is unknown, literally new technology. These materials are what we've been told cannot exist. This is CO2 gas in a solid state as a powder. This is the same CO2 liquid at the room temperature and pressure. We've shown these materials before. Literally, as you can see, the CO2 is in a powder state at room temperature. What has happened in this process? We have managed not to change the environmental condition to reach the new material, but we have managed to change the characteristics and gravitational magnetic field of the matter. How it's done? It's very simple. This process is literally can carried out and produced in simple units like this. These are, as you see, it's a working unit, it's not a theoretical. And what happens? What you see, you see the same mesh again as before. And what you see, literally, you can see the same wires as before, which has been used for that process. So, in a very simple creating condition and environment, 
and through some seven, ten years of research, we have to change the taboo that gases can be in a solid state at minus so many hundreds of degrees or high pressures. In fact, when you use these materials and you produce them, this is nano copper oxide in the same form. And this is another new material. These materials do not burn, do not get destroyed, no acid can affect them. We have tried every means to destroy these materials and it has not worked. You can see the residual of it here. This is over 200 degrees temperature. It comes back and it solidifies. What we offer to TEPCO is very simple. You mix this material into the water, into the liquid in your containment. And you allow it to settle. In this process, all the nuclear materials within the water, doesn't matter cesium, tritium, both extremes, H3 to cesium-137 and plus, will get attached to the, mold, to the structure of this material and it literally settles to the bottom. The water you get on the top is totally pure water, no contamination. So we get rid of the contamination problem which is sitting at the moment in these tanks. What you can do, at the same time as you were creating the oxide, nano-oxides we showed before, literally, you can place a magnet, and you can see how the magnet brings the material to one position. So, the rest of the water stays clear. This is a different process, the same. All material has come to the point where the magnet sits. So, you extract it as a solid. The same with this material. Again, you can see the shape of even the hole. You can see how the material gets attracted and sits at the bottom. So, what you do, you have literally totally clean water on the top. You get rid of And all the contamination is settled to the bottom. You can carry the same process in either way. All you do, you take the top layer off. No contamination. And that's how you clean up millions of gallons of water which is sitting in tanks in TEPCO. The process costs mass production maybe half a million. But the situation can be solved and can be used for future accidents once we learn more. This technology is very much, very similar to the, to the technology we saw in the Iraq-Kuwaiti War. In the Iraq-Kuwaiti War, if those are the ones who remember, prior to this war, there was a method, only one method known, that if you had the explosion on the oil well, you had to drill a hole on the side, it would have cost a few million dollars, to cap the fire at the oil well. When Saddam left Kuwait, he blew a lot of oil wells up and set them on fire to make sure that the enemy never benefit by it. And to close these oil wells would have literally taken years. The Americans and the British asked for international organization to help, that it can be brought down much faster. Romanians arrived with a jet on the back of a truck, reverse jet, and all they did, they literally turned on the engines and they blew out the fire with the jet engine backward, backwind. And so rapidly, in a matter of weeks, what was assumed to last for years to decontaminate and clean up and switch off was solved. This is the same technology but very advanced, but this is part of the structure of our own body. We live through this process. We've been told the gases do not and cannot be in the solid state at the room pressure and room temperature. But in fact, if you just think for one second, 
you realize how this hypocrisy has become to be accepted. Look at the structure of your own body. We are made of amino acids, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, gases in the environment. And we say these gases cannot be become solid matter. But the truth is, if you pinch your own and squeeze your own flesh, you are pinching solid gases. So in reality, we never understood how this process is done, but now we can see it. The interesting thing is that these materials behave as superconductors. Best superconductors we ever knew at room temperature and pressure. We published this three years ago in a book called The Structure of the Light. You can see the material. You can see how it made to solid. And the material has been tested by the universities, confirming the technology. It's been kept silent. And one of the biggest pressures on Cash Foundation has been to keep these kind of technologies silent, that the old technologies can carry on. This is the Raman spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy done by the University of Ghent in Belgium, not by us. And it confirms the fingerprint of CO2 characteristics. So, what we show you as CO2 has been tested by independently by scientists, but has been classified because of the reasons known to the government. So, now you have seen how simply, as you can see, this material is settling very, very slowly. By the time in 24 hours, it will be totally exactly like these materials here. Queen water, you can literally drink this. You can use it. The same material, the same things can be used for the contamination of the radioactive material in the air. In this package, we extract CO2. We create an environment where CO2 is extracted from the air. This is one of the contamination problems which we have. They say too much CO2. In air now, we have too much radioactive materials. The same process can be developed for extracting it. We have done it. These simple systems have created converted CO2 gas into a solid state. We can absorb the same radioactive materials from the environment in a larger scale. Now, the whole thing comes down to one thing. How we have managed to extract what has been released by TEPCO using what material is available in the farmlands and in the country and extract the joint together. This material can later on be separated in a very simple way. The technology exists in South Korea and in Belgium. We know the company which can do it if they need be. Now, we come to a totally radical technology, which we have never disclosed, but for the first time, we are going to show and explain the process and technology, which can help with the decontamination in a totally different way. Now we come to an extension to this technology, which has been known and has been shown. If we understood how we could create a new magnetic environment that could attract other materials to itself and how we could absorb from the soil or from the water other materials by creating gravitational magnetic field of the material which we want to extract. This brings us to a totally new technology, unknown, and we spoke about it and we are going to show the systems for it for the first time. We showed how you can use the new materials to extract radioactive material. What has this done? In reality, for the first time, we have shown we can make magnets. These are two magnets. They attract each other, as long as they are steel or they are iron-based or near iron material. But now we have shown how copper can create an environment to attract cesium, or steel 
can attract hydrogen tree, tritium. So for the first time we have shown that we can produce magnet for any material. Magnet to attract plastic, magnet to attract copper, magnet for wood, for glass, for bottles, for all sorts of combinations, even for fabric. This creates a totally new opportunity in the world of science. For example, we can use this technology to extract all these bottles which are floating in the sea, bigger than some continents at the moment. They are floating all over the oceans. We know it, we have been tracing it. So now we can produce magnetic gravitational fields which can attract these plastics and become part of the energy supply. How this can be done? We cannot produce so much copper wires and chicken mesh. What we have done with the new technology, plasma technology, which we have developed, we have produced a system which this system can be placed in any environment to extract, extract from the environment whatever material is needed, be it the energy magnetic field of copper, gold, glass or plastic, or even hydrogen or oxygen. As in deep space, we will not need to carry any more supply of oxygen or water because we create the gravitational magnetic field of the element we want and as we see, we can extract what we need from the environment. We extract the energy and then through a conversion, we change it to the matter, which is much easier. And this process of changing energy to matter, we release surplus energy which we have shown in this book, in this experiment done in Holland by the organizations which did independent testing, we create a lot of energy, we run a light, we run a motor, it's been shown, so we can produce all sorts of things, you can see it's been done independently, and it's running a motor. So, in fact, now, the knowledge of man has come so far that we can produce magnet for any material. This will change the mining process, this will change the position like where we have the cities which are highly uh, poisoned, air is damaging people. We can produce conditions and systems which extracts air pollution directly from the air. Cities can be made cleaner, cost very, very little, few thousand dollars. So, what we've done, we've seen these things as physical entities. Now we show you the systems which can be used to be done as a dynamic system. With the contamination which is sitting on the bottom of the sea by Fukushima, we cannot extract them with these kind of methods. We have to create and develop a new technology which we can extract everything from any environment. For the first time, we show such a system. This system has been developed and has been tested. So, what we've done, we developed technologies where we can extract any poison, any material from the environment. As you can see, these are very simple systems. They've been developed for the process. In these systems, what we create is exactly the same environment of the plasma of the material, destination material. All you do is you allow the material, the field of the material, to be produced. The magnetic gravitational field matches the gravitational magnetic field of the poison or contamination and you withdraw it. I move this further out so that you can see another system which has been set up. This system, as you see, has the same material on it as we shown before. This material can be used the same way to create environment and a plasma condition for extraction of cesium or plutonium. This is 
in reality, if you look, the shape of the Earth, the shape of the Sun, the shape of any plasma, electron or proton. Now that we have the knowledge to create magnetic fields and gravitational fields of any material, we do not need to produce solid materials like this. We create the condition, magnetic field gravitational, what we call MAGRAV, within these reactors, and these reactors allow the full extraction of the whole element spectrum. You can set the field strength for plastic, and a few seconds later, you can change the field for glass. But this has a huge implication. As we said in our mandate, our roadmap of 2014, we will see to the end of the world. Now we explain how. Even the battery of your telephone in your pocket carries a small microchip. The telephone you carry carries a microchip. The most sophisticated aircrafts carry a microchip. Aircraft carriers carry a microchip. We can produce gravitational magnetic field of the carbon or gold or any entity within these materials. When I extract the material, there is no chip, there is no telephone. We give two choices. We bring back what we announced through this technology, the World Peace Treaty, as we announced it, or we enforce it. The technology at this moment getting developed by three nations we know. Decontamination is the benefit to man as much as aid, the arming and World Peace Treaty. We are set to change the scene and will change the scene. But now we have shown how the knowledge is in the hand of public. These reactors are built. There has been a huge question for a long time how I run my reactors, I achieve power, energy and lift. If you understood how these materials are created, very simply, you replicate the same thing in these reactors. Very easy. Within the next few months, the scientists who are working with us, and I even received an email in the past 72 hours, one of the governments have set up, one of the top nations in the world, have set up laboratories working with these technologies and developing it. And we are assisting and we are going to assist them further to develop it fully. So, what would you like to be? We just need to create a condition from miles away as a carbon in the microchip or the gold in the microchip. You extract it, the microchip is literally useless. This microchip is on the aircraft. The aircraft cannot fly. The technology will not be used to harm no one, but the technology will be used to allow a gap for world leaders to start thinking for a new solution. By June of this year, we'll release the full technology, which means we will show how systems electronically can come to literally not to function. You have to rewire the whole aircraft. You have to rewire a whole aircraft carrier or a battleship. Change the condition and use the materials and these factories for the peaceful purposes or the technology now is in the hand of the people that enforce it. Thank you very much.